Now let me illustrate how a web app is going to work out. In my case, you could just write hip hop. So right now when you click on hip hop, you see playlist, you click on play playlist for hip hop, you can see the different hip hop playlists here. And now what you can do is you just choose whatever playlist you want. And you can see rap caviar here. You click on that. Hope you guys checked out the new J. Cole album. Really fire. Love it and all that. I'm a big fan of J. Cole. And you can see the different playlists. So then we would click on this and we would see the name of the song, in this case Rap Star by Polo G. And we'll also see the image. So that's how our web app is gonna work out. For sure we'll have a part two for this, but that's the early stage of this web app, and that's what we're doing for this tutorial. And hopefully you guys understood it. The next thing we'll go to our HTML, then CSS, and then finally JavaScript where I'll explain everything from A to Z. Okay guys, let's get started. Now the first thing I want us to look at is the HTML. And you can see right here we have a form with two inputs, two labels, and yeah, that's basically what it is. You can select, we have a select tag, and then we have our button. After that, you can see the script tags, and you can get this. I'll leave this, I'll leave a link to this um, script tag so you can get them on your own, but you could also get it on my GitHub, just so you know. And we're using Bootstrap for sure because I don't want us to put too much time on styling, but I still did style it a little bit, added the Poppins font, and yeah, I just added some colors and just basic stuff to make it look a little bit better. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to explain all the concept that is going to make us make this web app possible. So it's going to be a lot of explanation just to make you really understand it. And yeah, so we're going to start real simple, nothing too complicated. And hopefully if you have any questions, like I always say, put it down in the comments below and I'll make sure I can answer them, guys. Yeah, for this project, we'll be using pre-ES6. Now some introduction about Spotify for this application. We will be using their client credential authorization flow. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a token from Spotify and we'll use that token as we call future API endpoints. We're going to start our first module that will house all our API functionalities. Now what is the first thing we're going to do to get that token? The first thing is we're going to call their token API endpoint. This will be a post request. Also, we'll be given a client ID and also a client secret during the registration of our app. And you know what? Now I'm going to show you how we register this app. Okay, guys, really excited about this. The next part is we're going to actually create our client ID and also our client secret. And the way we do that, in the description below, I'll leave a link to this address right here. This is developer.spotify.com slash dashboard slash login. So you'll be able to click on it and you should be exactly where I am right now. Depending on when you're watching this video, maybe this image might be updated. But what you'll see for sure is you'll see a login and they'll ask you if you don't have an account, you should sign up for a Spotify account here for free. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in. Yeah, guys, so if you've created your account, you should be in this place, which is your dashboard. And you can see right here, we say it says create an app. And for you to create an app, you just click on it and give the app a name. I'll call it App Spotify. Spotify. In the description, I just say Spotify. Well, Spotify Web Application. And yeah terms and policy and now we create it and yeah guys we've created our Spotify app what you can see right here is you can see the client ID and it says also here you can see your client secret so those are the two things you'll need and the next part I'll show you where you can paste them in our code but for now hopefully we've gotten your ID and everything worked out smoothly now let's get to VS code again this will be useful in the post request as well because we will pass that in the body of the post request now once we call that API, Spotify will give us back a bearer token that we will continue to use as we call their various API endpoints. Okay guys, we're going to start with the API module. Okay, so now you can see that we have the initial code set up for our first module, which is our API module. It's an iffy and we know that by these two parentheses here, 
that will cause this function to fire immediately inside the function. We have declared two variables, a client ID and a client secret. We've also created a private method called getToken that will return a promise as denoted by the async keyword set before the parenthesis. So inside the function, we use the JavaScript fetch API method to call the Spotify token endpoint. This needs to be a post request. We need to specify the required content, our header. Additionally, the require we supply parameter called authorization with the value of basic followed by a base64 encoded string representation of the client ID and the client secret in our request. Finally, we store that JSON result into a variable called data and precisely return the access code property from the JSON data. We'll be able to use that bearer token to call a Spotify endpoint, giving us an actual playlist. And now let's talk about the API endpoints we're going to be calling. The first endpoint we're calling is get a list of categories. The second one is get a categories of playlist. And the third one is get a playlist item. And the last one is get a track. Now I'll go over the details using the first method and I'll show you differences in the subsequent methods. Our first method is to get a list of genres. This method receives a token parameter because we'll need to supply the token Spotify provided to us in each API call. This function will return a promise as denoted by the async keyword. We will use the JavaScript fetch method to call the Spotify categories API endpoint. In line with Spotify's documentation, this will be a get request and we are to pass a bearer token along the way in the request header. The next method is to get a list of playlists based on the given genre. This method receives a token parameter and a genre ID parameter. We will create a variable to hold the limit on the amount of playlists we want to receive using the JavaScript fetch API. We call the categories playlist endpoint, applying both the genre ID and limp, additionally supplying the request header information. Here you can see we're using JavaScript template literal in our fetch API. Template literals are very versatile because they allow us to embed expressions directly inside of a string. Anyways, we will receive the data from Spotify, convert it to JSON, and finally return the items array on the playlist option. The next method is to get a list of tracks from a given playlist. This method will receive a token and a track endpoint parameter. We will have this data track endpoint because it's included in the data set we retrieved when we first pulled the playlist. So in turn, when the user selects the playlist, we'll be able to access the track API endpoint attached to the playlist object. We declare limit and we pass the track endpoint and limit the fetch API call. We supply the token, await the result from the fetch call, await the JSON conversion. Finally, then we return the item array object. Next, we return methods that we want to expose to the outside scope here. We are using closures because the publicly declared getToken method has access to the privately implemented getToken method. This public method will be called in our main app module. We are now going to start working on the functionality to handle our UI. We will create a module for that as well. We will need to be able to populate select lists and create change events for them to interact with the API data. We've got our second module started, which is our UI module. First thing we do is declare an object to hold reference to our HTML selectors. We do this to avoid having to type the specific selector name multiple times as we code. If we have to update an ID or class name in our HTML file, we'll only need to update it once here in the JavaScript file. Next, we're going to declare public methods that will eventually be called by our main controller. The first method, input field, returns an object with the following name value pairs. Essentially, the object will return the actual HTML field. This object is useful as it allows us to attach event listeners to input fields outside of the module. Our next method, createGenre, will be used to add select options to our genre select field. The next method receives a tech and value parameter that will pass into the template literals 
Here we're using template literals to construct actual HTML. We then grab our genre select field using the query selector method. We pass in the genre select using the DOM element object we created above. We then insert the HTML into the genre select field using the insert adjacent HTML method. The insert adjacent HTML method will insert text as HTML at a specific position. We're using the before in this position, which says we want to insert our elements as the last child of the parent element. We use this coding approach to generate playlists, generate tracks, and generate details for a given track. We currently have two separate modules, one for our UI and one for our API. Our module has no relation to our API data. Now we're going to make a module that will utilize both the API and UI module to handle retrieving of data from Spotify and populating our UI fields with data. We have now coded our last two event listeners. The submit button will use the click event listener. It will work very similar to the genre change event listener. We first utilize the prevent default method to prevent the page from refreshing. We then call the reset track on our UI controller. We grab the selected place value, which will be a Spotify track endpoint. Then we get all the tracks for that playlist and we display them in our list group. Finally, we add a click event listener to our track div. If you recall, each track will be represented by an anchor tag inside of that track div. While the user will click on the anchor tab to select track, event delegation is a technique that allows us to delegate a parent element as a listener for all the events that happen inside of it. So we attach the event to the parent track div that encapsulates all the anchor tags. When you click on the anchor element, you're also clicking on the tracks div. In turn, we trigger the event listener on that div. We then utilize the event.target to determine which element within the track did we actually click on. Now that we have an actual element, we can access the tracks div endpoint since we set that to be a value ID property on the anchor tag. We then call the API to get the actual track object and we render that to the page. Looks like the app is working as expected. We are able to load genres, then load playlists, and finally it's done. So now you just choose a genre and uh, choose hip hop. You can see rap caviar, rap caviar. You can see love my 80s hip hop. You click on that and you see the different 80s hip hop. You can click on South Bronx. You can see it boogie down. Can even switch it up again and I'll choose hip hop again. I'll choose rap caviar. And you can see we have rap star right here, Polo G, Solid by featuring Drake by Young Stoner Life. So you can see different stuff here Lil Baby and Lil Dirk. Just really nice, cool stuff by DJ Khaled, of course. Don't play yourself. And depending on how much you guys like this, I might do a part two of something totally different from this with Spotify API. And that's all we did right here. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Many more videos coming your way, guys. Join the community. And yeah, I'll see you all in the next YouTube video.